Hello, my name is Carl Monk. I'm going to introduce you to a new science, or perhaps an old science, depending upon one's viewpoint. It is the science of geomathematics, as taught to us by the Pyramid Matrix. The Pyramids, an unsolved mystery until now. The prevailing methodologies being used to explain them are inadequate. Our search for answers has been centered around the most simplistic of questions. Who built them? When? How? And why? The few answers we do have, we most generally thought up ourselves with little regard for facts. But no real harm done, except that someone is going to have to rewrite a few thousand history books. The proper questions? Why are they exactly where they are and designed the way they are? Ask these questions and answers begin to flow. In order to read the pyramids, we must make an adjustment in our thinking. Once made, we achieve the fine tuning necessary for the decoding process. That adjustment is our Greenwich prime meridian of 0, 360 degrees longitude. That's our prime meridian, not theirs. Theirs was very clearly indicated by the Great Pyramid, some 31 degrees, 8 minutes, and 0, 0, 0.8 seconds to the east of Greenwich. This, of course, means that when reckoning the longitudes of their global matrix array, we must correct them to Giza. As for latitudes, they use the very same equator that we use. This global array that I referred to involves far more than just pyramids. For example, there were great geometric forms which were built up with nothing more than dirt such as the great octagon at Newark, Ohio. And great earth circles, such as the fort, about a mile to the southeast of the octagon. And Germany's Golo circle near Bonn. And some circles were even built upward in the shape of hemispheres, such as Mexico's Cuicuilco Pyramid. That's what we call it anyway. The Aztecs call it Juliaco, and since they named it long before we did, that's the name I'll use for it. And finally, the best known of all prehistoric circles, England's Stonehenge. What do such ancient monuments mean? These artifacts can be read almost as easily as one reads a newspaper, only the writing is different. We are a purely literary culture. We live, think, and work by alphabets. The geomathematics of this ancient pyramid matrix system was arranged around the language of mathematics. It has only been our reluctance to admit to ourselves that ancient men knew mathematics that has ensured the silence of their monuments for so very long. Deciding to admit it to myself one day and following through with it, these monuments began to speak. British archaeologists have verified that before Stonehenge fell into ruins, it comprised an outer circle of 60 stones, 30 lintels held aloft by 30 supporting stones. The inner display, in the shape of a horseshoe, had five lintels held aloft by ten stones. Fifteen. Let's take these one at a time. What do the sixty stones of the perimeter have to say? They are arranged in a perfect 360 degree circle. Did the builders reckon circles to have 360 degrees of arc like we do? Remember what I said about admitting that maybe they did? It's as easy as that. 
A 360 degree circle of 60 stones presents a simple mathematical equation. Sixty times 360 is 21,600. Now why did they wish to convey such a number? Did they? Or is this just idle speculation? They did. Because neatly hidden behind this number of 21,600 are three other numbers, 51, 10, and 42.352941. And when seen as 51 degrees, 10 minutes, and 42.35 seconds of latitude, we find that this is the dead center position of Stonehenge on our modern maps. Examine what is shown. Count the numbers shown and multiply. And Stonehenge, in absolute silence, explains to anyone precisely where it is. With this discovery now affirmed, we know that they used our present-day 360-degree system when working with circles. Another well-known system used today is the base 10 system. 10 cents is a dime, 10 dimes is a dollar, and so on. Did they also have a base 10 system? All we have to do is ask, but we must use their language to ask such questions, or we get no answers. Stonehenge has already shown us this number 21,600 in its actual latitude north of the equator, a single number which encodes 51 degrees, 10 minutes, 42.35 seconds. Let's call 21,600 its grid latitude. Now, if they wish to explain a base 10 system to us, all they'd have to have done is to build other circles at grid latitudes or longitudes of 2,160 or 216,000. The stonework at Stonehenge is what archaeologists call the Phase Three construction. It dates to 1,750 years before Christ. The first phase, dating a thousand years earlier, was a simple circular earthworks with a diameter of roughly 228 feet. It looks rather blank without the stones, doesn't it? Yet even this construction was important because the ancients built analogs to it everywhere. At least two of them right here in North America at Newark, Ohio. Almost a carbon copy, isn't it? Except this one has a diameter of 1,056 feet, one-fifth of a mile. Its original name lost in time, we call it a fort, built by the Hopewell Indians. But that defies logic. Indians never built forts, they attacked them. Obtain a U.S. geological survey map for Newark, lay out a grid, and anyone can find that the fort centers itself at precisely 40 degrees, 0, 02 minutes, and 27.00 seconds north latitude. And these figures multiply to exactly 2,160, which is one-tenth of the 21,600 grid latitude of Stonehenge. That's a base 10 system using earthworks of comparable format. Of course, there are those who would be more than happy to write all of this off to mere coincidence. After all, history is comfortable with the idea that the early American Indians were ignorant because they didn't have an alphabet like ours. But they did have an alphabet. It was mathematical. And to ensure that we would have no difficulty understanding it on our side of time, they built a third opinion and right here at Newark. Remember now, we must reckon their longitudes from Giza, not our modern Greenwich. While this circle on the octagon is centered at 82 degrees, 
26 minutes 55.4 seconds west of Greenwich today. It was originally 113 degrees, 34 minutes, 56.22 seconds west of Giza's Great Pyramid. The individual numbers of which multiply to 216,000. The fort at grid latitude 2,160. Stonehenge at 21,600 and now the circle in the octagon at its grid longitude of 216,000. No question about it. They also knew our base 10 system and they proved it to us through their geomathematics. But what about the octagon itself? What was its function in this incredible system of geomathematical order? Examine it closely. Notice that its eight sides are opened eight times. In other words, its eight sides are divided by eight. Okay, what are we supposed to divide by eight? The attached circle, of course. Divide its grid longitude of 216,000 by eight which gets us 27,000 exactly. And guess what we have at grid latitude 27,000? Germany's Golo Circle. Neatly centered upon the Earth at exactly 50 degrees, 20 minutes, 27 seconds. Said numbers of which multiply to 27,000. And found from eight divisions in an octagon, one third of a world away. Yet, what was the original mandate that required the Golo Circle to be placed at grid latitude 27,000? One quality of mathematics is its ability to run in circles, so there has to be another way, or ways, for this ancient global matrix to prove a basis for Golo. Where do we find that? Before it fell into ruins, when a visitor approached Stonehenge, what was the first number to come to mind? Yes, two. Two separate efforts here, lintels and supporting rocks. Then, once inside, the observer finds the 15 inner and 60 outer stones. Three base numbers here, two, 15, and 60 and when multiplied they become 1,800. Now then, take this 1,800 and multiply it by the 15 inner stones to find 27,000, the grid latitude of Golo. The outer circle of stones at Stonehenge was complete, unbroken, but the inner display was divided into five separate units. Dividing 1800 by 5, we return to the base, 360. When they tell us to do something like this, they had to have left us a monument which answers their matrix at 360. Did they leave us something at 360? Sure. Marking their prime meridian as it did, Giza's Great Pyramid centers itself on 360 degrees of longitude. But that's a pyramid, a squared monument involving the pi ratio and a different aspect of this matrix. What we're looking for has to be round, like Stonehenge. Mexico's Juliaco is round. It says 360 degrees. And that is exactly where it is. 19 degrees, 18 minutes, and 01.5263 seconds north of the equator, the numbers of which all multiply to 360. Juliaco's grid latitude is 360. See, anyone can read this matrix. All we have to do is think, but in their language. We have only to admit to ourselves that they knew math at least as well as we do. Or we can simply throw the maps and the math away, leave things as they are, and remain in the dark. What we are seeing in this matrix 
is the signature of someone who raised global positioning to a fine art, not Stone Age degenerates. Why does Juliaco have four terraces on it? To explain how they did their spherical computations. You see, like Stonehenge, Juliaco is an equation. It shows us how to perform spherical calculations without using the pi ratio. But that's for another time. Thank you.